throughout the course of the season. There's going to be some highs and lows. Hey, no matter what happens, keep that thing rolling. A lot of guys have been put in situations they're probably not used to. I think they've done a pretty good job. Here is Lillard for the record. And he has now moved past Clyde Drexler for the all-time scoring mark in Blazers history. To climb it and be number one is a special accomplishment that I'm proud of. I'm proud of. certainly looked more competent as a basketball team. I have to give a big shout out to Chauncey. He's got them well prepared. They're competing. They're playing hard. So we got to be thinking when we hooping. Be thinking when we hooping. A career high shown by Anthony Simons. They're going to run it again. If we say we want to really win, this is what it's going to take. Come on, man. Finish this out. Come on, finish up one, two, three. All right, man, let's get better today. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So my second year and some of the development that's happened, we have a better roster, we got a little more experience, talent on our team, and, you know, from a coaching standpoint, I felt like we needed more fire. My coach differently now. I'm the guy that kind of got to challenge everybody. Good job. But you just bring what the team needs. Pull around, pull around, G. As a player, I did lead my teams that way. Good take. I keep telling myself all the time, I coach the way that I play, I coach the way that I led my teams. We gotta be patient, all right? We gotta be patient getting down low. The biggest difference is, as a player, if something wasn't going right, I can just take the ball and take the game over by myself. I wish I was young enough to be able to still go back and do that, but as a coach, I have to be really good about teaching whoever has the ball in their hands to see the game kind of the way that I seen it. And that is tough. Let's go, let's finish it out. Go pass, go pass. What a leading part to me is, is pretty simple. I mean what I say, you know, and I say what I mean. I'm always gonna be honest with our guys. No. It's sometimes tough to hear. In the game, we just playing. Right now, we got a lot of people that don't know what the hell we doing. It should be one extra guy, man in the paint, who's not guarding nobody, and then everybody else get a man, correct? Yeah. So if I'm guarding the ball, should I do this? And make sure you're right there? Open up your mouth, man. Come on, let's talk, let's talk. Drew's talking, come on. That's probably been the easiest adjustment for me because I've always just led men like that. No matter who was on my team, I had that type of respect based on they know the work that I put into it. You know, they see the hours among hours and the studying and they see it. And so when it's time for me to make a suggestion or time for me to lead, they understood where it came from. It came from an honest place. So we gotta be thinking when we hooping though. Be thinking when we hooping. I understand what it's like to be a player. I understand the cadence of playing in these games, knowing when to challenge guys. Lillard out ahead to Grant for the two-hand jam. Knowing when to give guys time to rest. Just having a good feel, you know, it's gonna give you confidence. It's gonna give you freedom to play the game as long as you play it the right way. So I think that's what that means when somebody says he's a player's coach. When it's time to practice or play, I'm gonna be locked in. I'm locked in all day. Going back home, just a couple tough losses. You don't have the success that you wanted to have on this trip, but I think going back two and four is like, you know, missed opportunity. You know, and I felt like we underachieved. You know, we could have we could have walked away from this, you know, on a, a much better end of it. Damian Lillard and the Blazers return home here to Portland. Dame, the all-time leading scorer in Blazers history, but more than points, certainly an iconic figure here in Portland and in the great state of Oregon and within the NBA as well. And the fans getting their first opportunity to welcome him back. Adagar, 6'3", from Weber State. Portland Trailblazers franchise all-time leading scorer wearing the letter We gotta talk it over. I'm gonna pass it to you. I'm a player like that. Hey, everything they're doing is simple. They just try to line us 
up, man. We got to guard our man and rebound the ball. Guard and rebound, man. Defense on three. One, two, three. Rebound batted by Nurk into the air. Up for grabs. Dave pokes it ahead. Here's Grant on a two on one. Silence to Grant for the two hand jam. That's the way you get out and run off a scramble. No win, bro. Way to take care of business, man. Way to get back on track. Together on three. One, two, three. Crowd up on their feet and count it down to the big ceremony that's about to unfold here tonight at Mobile. You know, I'm not always good at being in those types of moments. It almost makes me a little bit uncomfortable because I don't like being the, the center of attention, you know, or having everything about me. You know, that's something I got to be better about, you know, just embracing these types of accomplishments. It's an honor, you know, to be at the top of that list. Congratulations. Go enjoy this moment. Thank you. We cannot recognize Dame's fantastic basketball accomplishments without recognizing the person he is. Dane is a great person. So thank you, Dane, for being willing to include us all in what you do. You know, he's someone who leads by example. He's someone who's vocal when needs be. A great dude who, you know, you want to play with someone like that. A young guy looking up to Dane, it makes me want to keep pushing harder. When I really sit back and take a, a look at, you know, this type of accomplishment, I'm just reminded of all the people that played a part in this journey. And I don't mean to, to not give myself credit because, you know, I've got up every day all my life and, and did the work. I'm just so happy that I've been able to have this type of ride in one uniform. And it's only one thing left to accomplish, and I think y'all know what that is, so. I know for a fact with Chauncey, you know, that'll wrap this up and finish the script for me, so I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you. I have a lot of trust in our guys, and it's what we've been preaching as a staff the entire time since we've been here, as we're saying, we have to do it together. Y'all know how I am already. Why would we change and they haven't stopped us? I'm the type of leader that I'm empowering everybody to be themselves. No idea is crazy. I want to hear it all because I'm not the coach that come in and say, this is what we're doing, bang, 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 bang. I don't want to hear nothing. No, I'm just trying to learn. Our interactions are really good, whether it's about players, about other teams, about schemes, about concepts, and I'm a lot of times listening, so I'm almost like a referee sometimes. You know, just the diversity of thought in the room is just incredible. Last point, Coach. Seriously, we got a good team, man. We got to take advantage of the connectivity. The West, think about it. We kind of screwed up a couple of games. We'd be right there first place. But we have 50 games to go or so. We got to keep taking advantage of, of the brotherhood in here, because it's high levels. We all need to be on the same page. A lot of things go wrong, and a lot of stuff can go right, and you can still lose. But we want to give ourselves the best chance to win the game by doing it right, correct? Scotty Brooks. As my number one assistant, as a first-time head coach, I wanted somebody that had been a long-time head coach and been very successful coaching the playoffs. Obviously, Scotty's coaching the finals, understood and knew how to manage egos and manage great players, and so many great experiences that I knew I could learn from. Yeah, I hired Scotty to basically teach me how to be a head coach. He and I have similar leadership styles. Scotty grew up in a very tough environment, tough neighborhood, the youngest of seven, single mother, and just grinded his way through life. You know, just think about it. A small point guard that was talented, played, won championships, played with Akeem Olajuwon. Everything that he made, he went and grinded for it. And all of those experiences has led to him being an amazing leader. He can actually go speak to any one of our players and whatever they're going through, he's probably went through it and overcame it. As you were watching Scotty all over the place, he's talking and having private and personal conversations with everybody on our team and sometimes everybody in our building because that's his gift. Hey, Chance, hold on, one more rep. One more rep, yeah, Shay needs a rep. Shay needs a rep. Oh, yeah. 
Kill it, kill it right here. Drew, hold on, hold on. Drew, that's you and GP. How many times this happens in the game? Yeah, come on, this is what happens in the game. We got two guys guarding one. Jeremy gets a wide open three. I don't care that he didn't make that, right? We don't want to give up this shot. We have to improve our communication. That's all transition defense is. All right, here we go. White ball, blacks on D, four blacks. Four, four black jerseys on D. Roy Rogers, we were rookies together in Boston. We was traded together to Toronto. So we have this really long standing relationship and we coached together my first year coaching with the Clippers. I always kind of felt like with a defensive coordinator, you need somebody with a real presence. That's a position that you always got to be very critical. You got to stand up and you got to be able to call people out. That's a tough job in the NBA. Let's go. Good. If you don't have a presence, a lot of guys in that position can get walked over. I knew that wasn't going to happen with Roy. Steve Hetzel helps me with the offense, the last coach on my bench. And he's done an incredible job. I didn't know Hetz before I got the job. That's one of the things I didn't want to just go hiring people, all these people that I knew. I wanted to hire people that I knew worked for really great coaches that I could learn from, that had a way with players that were grinders, were really going to work. cared about helping me become a great head coach. And then behind the bench, Jonah hurt you. It's kind of special teams, out of timeout plays, end the game situations, doing an awesome job. And then you have DA, David Atkins, who runs the player development. I was with the Wizards for a long time. He's amazing at his job. Mark Tyndale, um, who's right up under him, player development. And then my brother Rodney, coached in college for a long time. He was at the University of Colorado for six years, and then he was head coach at the University of Denver for five. It's a free throw situation. Up three, get the ball out quick, or if we're down, let the ball bounce so we can get in position. This year, he's working right up under Roy Rogers, working on the defensive side. Find the net, find the net. No, so I got an incredible, incredible staff that I'm very happy with. He knows the game, he's played the game at a high level. He won a ring, was finals MVP. You know, so he knows what it takes to win. He knows stuff on the court, stuff off the court, the distractions, the frustrations. He's someone that you want to play for, someone that you can talk to. He, he's competitive, so you know he'll want to go to battle with you and, and go to bat for you. He's someone who's a player's coach. The coaching staff and Coach Chauncey's helped me through this whole process. They just let me be me. You know, it's just been a lot of ups and downs, a lot of L's before, you know, I got to the got to the W's, but you know, it's part of the journey. And I think uh, mentally prepared me to get ready for what was coming next. And it turned out to be a good year last year. <laughs> it's just been a hell of a journey, hell of a journey. Welcome back to the Chase Center in San Francisco. Gary Payton II is receiving his championship ring tonight. The ring ceremony was, you know, surreal. That was, that was special. I'm honored to be able to present this to someone who's gone on the journey that you've gone on. I only got 15 seconds, so I love you, brother. Y'all show this young champ some love. Gary Payton has said that's quite a ring that he's got there. The ring ceremony in San Francisco. Um, I used to watch the finals all the time every year. You know, just telling myself, man, I wish I can lift up that trophy at the end and always be ready for your moment. My journey was different, just like anybody else's journey is different. It was just finding my own way. At Salt Lake Community College, had two good years there. Didn't know much about the city. I just decided, it was like, why not just put everything in one basket and, and see how it goes. First reaction hearing the news, uh, retired jersey, is uh, it was just shocking, you know? Um, I honestly didn't think I was playing that well here when I was here, you know, to be put in the Raptors, but uh, it was a dope experience. The, the group of guys that I had for the two years and Coach Paul and Coach Todd uh, just made it special. Yeah, I just want to say I appreciate everybody, school, my teammates, my old teammates. Appreciate y'all letting me the time to do this. And on uh, behalf of my organization, everybody, my family, we want to say thank you guys to the Bruins and Salt Lake Community College. So thank you. That's tough.
tough though. First one. First one. That's fire though. Hey, that's fire. That's fire. The process of, you know, recruiting by Oregon State uh, followed Pop's footsteps and kind of created my own in the same way, in the same time. And, uh, you know, it turned out for the best. It's crazy, but nothing's changed since I was a freshman and he was a senior. We had a good relationship back then. We still have a good relationship now. We did a lot of great things at Oregon State in our one year together. Back to it. Uh, what do you want to do? Hey. He's really just been that vocal leader right now. Jeremy Corner! They're on a run it again! Play it up, play it up, play it up. And one. You know, he's trying to get back healthy. He's being a great teammate like he always had, and you know, we're gonna be even better when he gets back. Good to great, good to great. And on the bench, I'm tuned in, locked in. You know, I love to see my guys, you know, succeed, and it's just good to, you know, see that fight in them. Uh, Gary practiced a little bit today and he looked all right. You know, just trying to keep him advancing to where we all feel comfortable enough to put him out there, you know, and know that he's not risking anything. So we'll just kind of see. Of course, the buzz here in Portland is the fact that Gary Payton II is in colors. Rip City tells me all the time, you know, they was waiting. I had the same feeling for them. It's crazy how much excitement they can get from watching guys play with that grit. It feels good and it feels nice to, you know, be out here with all the guys finally and, you know, get the battle. Now I can be out there with them and, you know, guide them and help them on the floor instead of just, you know, talking to them and telling them I can actually show them, you know, how to get it done. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood in Denver called Park Hill. You know, it's a neighborhood that was infested with gangs and everything that you can think of. But it was so normal to me. I was a pretty good athlete from a young age. Some of the older dudes in the neighborhood, when they see you promise from a young guy, they make sure that the streets don't take them. One of my really close friends got murdered. He was he was 12, and that kind of changed my life because like, I could have actually been there with him at that moment. And I think those things really shaped me because you, you learn very, very young how to deal with stuff like that. But you know, you always have situations and, and opportunities, you know, but I just wanted more, you know. I wanted more for myself and, and for my family. It's always good to be able to come home, you know, and a lot of my guys that, you know, was on this journey with me when I was here showed up today. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at this guy. Yeah. yeah. What's up, family? Some of my friends, some of my, my family members, it was good, and they surprised me. I didn't even know that they was going to be here. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, you Coach. I'm not going to make you do push-ups today. Love you, man. I know, man. No push-ups. No push-ups. Really what this is about, it's about you doing these stands. Because what we wanted to do is bring somebody back. Bring him back to not just put his name on the court, but bring back our community. Bring back what's special about George Washington to honor our past, to represent our present, and to think for it for our future. This is an amazing honor for me. I've been very fortunate in my career to accomplish a lot of things. This is going to rank right at the top. There were so many other players that came here before me that were great players that I looked up to. And there were a lot of players that came after me, but they chose me and I'm very thankful that y'all chose me. I never even thought, you know, that this was possible. This is where I really started taking the game very serious to see where I could go with it. Thank you. It's just awesome to be able to come back, you know, and then rename the court after me. And I'm just thankful that they, that they wanted to do it. They worked around my schedule. But more importantly, the honor, the honor itself is, is incredible. Of course, of course. Tell what up, man? Hey, what's up, man? And the Blazers take a tough loss here at home. Blazers now have lost nine of their last 12 ball games. 
we're just in a little funk, man. We reacted as opposed to act. Most of the time you lose when you do that. Well, our first 30, 40 games in the last six minutes is really where we've struggled. And I think that's a little bit of lack of experience of playing together. But in those moments, we have to be more locked in. We have to be more aggressive, more physical. I have a better attention to detail because every possession matters in those kind of games. Strong can't last forever, so don't fight it. Take the punches, um, just get back up, keep fighting, keep striving, and just don't ever doubt yourself. I've been so lucky and so blessed in my career. I've always just believed that people only remember how you make them feel. Me being able to lead and me being able to like change players' lives by me leading them now is what this is all about for me. You know, of course I love basketball. Of course I'm very passionate. Of course you know I want to win. But life is bigger than that. And I feel as though like I'm here to be significant, not just successful, be significant. And I hope that I'm here for a long time, coaching this team and winning a lot of championships. But life is bigger than sports, and my mind is bigger than sports, and I'm gonna find a way to continue to be significant no matter what. The sky really is the limit for him as a coach. I mean, he's just been remarkable in the confidence that he gives to our players. Me and the coaches have, they just tell me to be me, um, just becomes more fluent. We're a team that's going to just keep fighting and take things one possession at a time. Chauncey has a good way about him. It's not his way, it's our way. We got to figure out this way together.